Okay, this is my new Y6 build. It's the exact same components, electronics, powertrain, etc., as the previous one, but this time it's built onto a kind of development of my macro quad frame that I designed earlier this year. Uh, last week, last weekend, I had an issue where it flew great, but the um, the landing detection didn't work. So because by default, RD Pilot uses stick commands for arming and disarming. Um, it actually overloads the throttle and rudder stick. So if you hold throttle down, full left rudder, that means disarm. But obviously you only want that to happen when it's on the ground. If it's in the air and you hold down throttle left rudder, you probably don't want it to disarm mid-air. You probably want it to just descend and turn left. The issue I had last weekend was that the landing detection didn't work. So when it was on the ground, it thought it was in the air. So when I held down and left rudder, it actually tried to your left on the ground. But because it was on the ground and it couldn't your left because of the resistance of the ground, it then actually throttled up with the throttle held all the way down and uh, ended up flipping itself over. Uh, but luckily I discovered you can actually have switch arming on um, Arducopter. So I swapped to having that. And we're now gonna give it a go and also do a new auto tune um, because, unbeknownst to me, the Cube Orange only supports D-Shot when you have the ESCs connected to the AUX outputs, not the main outputs. So last weekend, when I auto-tuned it, I auto-tuned it in regular old-school 50Hz PWM mode. That's now loiter. Right, we'll get straight into, into auto-tune, I think. A bit more height. So this is the position hold auto-tune. I think it's on roll axis only at the moment. So. There we go. So it's gonna twitch backwards and forwards on the roll axis to essentially measure how much it actually physically moves versus how much the flight controller thinks that motor impulse should move it. So that's now completed tuning the roll axis. So by landing and disarming with auto-tune enabled, it will overwrite those new PIDs. Um, let's have a look at what it says. Auto-tune success, auto-tune saved gains, right? And I'm now going to update, you probably won't see this from that angle, I'm going to use my phone using Q ground control via a 433 megahertz radio to change the auto-tune axes parameter. Search A-U-T-O, enter. Uh, right now it's set to roll only, I'm going to put it to pitch only, hit save. Okay, so I'll take off again, and this time when we activate auto-tune, it will just do the pitch axis. Right, so now it will switch backwards and forwards on the pitch axis, doing exactly the same thing. So the flight controller will say, pitch forward this amount. It then measures on the IMU how much it actually pitches forwards. Now I've got a dog walker. And then it can adjust the, uh, the gains accordingly to correct the discrepancy against the expected and the measured movement, which is nice. There we go, that's now done pitch. So again, if I land it with auto-tune enabled, that means the new pits will overwrite. and my disarm switch is working nicely. So now we've got the yaw axis left. Yaw axis seems to take the longest, especially on um, coaxial quads. Quads? It's not a quad. Coaxial copters. Um, but this frame, it seems to complete much quicker than the previous one, which implies that I designed and built this one better. Right, Lloyd to take off.
and now we will auto tune the yaw axis. So it's now going to twitch left and right on the yaw axis. Okay, and it's done. So again, bring it back to land with auto tune enabled on the switch still. Okay, so we're now fully auto tuned, and I'm going to quickly remove auto tune from the switch. So if we go back into loiter, take off. I think it flies at least as well as my best previous flying Y6, which ironically I think was actually the very first one with the wooden booms. And definitely not the, uh, the most recent previous one with the, the full carbon construction. So disarm is a case of flicking the disarm switch, but with throttle at zero. So bring it down. On it lands, throttle down to zero. And flick the switch. And I much, much prefer that to using stick arming. So as I was saying, it'll be interesting to see if the flight controller complains about um, compass interference because with these um, lithium ion packs, I can have these strapped directly above the flight controller, the orange cube bit there, and it doesn't affect the compass the magnetometer in the flight controller at all because these things, lithium polymer packs like this, don't actually have much actual metal in. The lithium isn't metallic lithium or something. And you can test this on a, on a phone, actually. If you open an app which tells you the raw sensor data from the magnetometer on your phone, this measures it in micro teslas. This is saying minus 16 plus seven minus 50. If I stick this right on top of it, it still reads minus 14 plus seven minus 50, which is nothing. But if you actually put a metal object next to it, and I don't have anything, if, if I put my multi-tool next to it, it will shoot up to hundreds or thousands on those uh, on those same values. Now the uh, lithium ion packs here, um, these are 21700 lithium ion cells, so these actually have metal cell casings. It's very thin metal, but it is still metal. So it'll be interesting to see whether um, the flight controller actually complains or not. It amazes me how some people passing just couldn't care less when they see something bizarre like this. Maybe people have become completely desensitised to drones that even something that looks like this is uh, now run of the mill. Seagulls can and do attack drones. Heard stories from uh, Beverly Hills aerials where they had to fly a second decoy drone to draw the seagulls away from the actual camera drone. Yeah, I like this. I like it even more now that I know that I can disarm safely.
I mean, the landing detection is still there, it's still functional, so things like RTH, it will, in theory, land and disarm itself. But by having the switch arming, I don't have to rely upon that landing detection to function correctly in order to disarm. And of course, the air quotes correct thing to do would be to work out why landing detection didn't work and to address that, but that could well mean making substantial changes to the design of the frame. The frame is a, an intentional compromise between what is ideal for flying and what is ideal for actually working with. So by having the top mount batteries and payloads, it makes it, makes it really easy to, uh, to work with. I don't have to uh, mess around flipping anything up upside down to put batteries in, etc. And there we go. I just like how dumb this looks. And honestly, having a copter that I can do dumb stuff like this with is exactly what I was going for.